the afternoon here in Welshpool and I thought it'd be nice to come on and do a bit of stamping with you guys as I, I missed out on doing it last night. I got a bit distracted, I had a delivery of uh, polymer clay, I nearly said photopolymer clay then, polymer clay and started playing in the afternoon and didn't finish till about gone midnight and it was so much fun, I will show you what I made in a minute. Anyway, I hope you guys are keeping well and I just thought we'd just do some fun, happy kind of floral stamping because it's interesting when you're working with a different medium and looking at inspiration, how it then inspires you for, for sort of a medium you know well, which is, you know, stamping and, and paper crafting. So anyway, I thought it'd be just fun to come and stamp something pretty with you guys. Sorry, just unhacking something to give myself a bit more space. So what have I got here? This is a piece of, oh, a bit of whisper white. It's a bit, a bit battered, but I think it'll be okay once we stamped on it. That'll be fine. I'm going to get myself a piece of paper just pop underneath. So, hi everybody. Oh, you're watching on your TV. Excellent. That's a fine. That's so fine. Hi Sheila, Lorraine, who else? Janine, Linda, Claire, Deborah. Nice to see you all. Okay, so I've picked out some pretty colours and I'll just get stamping, see what happens. Right, I like the idea of maybe stamping some paler leaves in the background and then building up over the top so oh that one's out I used that earlier what have I put that then hmm. oh well it's somewhere on my desk so I used it earlier I was trying to see if I could stamp onto polymer clay so somewhere thank you oh yes I'll show you a bit more I've baked everything now so it'll be interesting to see um, how it makes up because I'm going to be making some jewelry from the pieces that I stamped so so I'm kind of randomly stamping here just stamping stamping again Twisting, and I'm not inking the whole stem up as I find the stem just seems to get in the way. Yep. Just grab out another one. Hi, Caroline. Hi Chris Kusum Kusmunt. Hi Michaela. Hi Louise. Okay, so I'm just gonna stamp me with some of these as well. Oh, that's my drink. space but oh well tell you what this process is so much quicker than doing polymer clay because <laughs> with clay you have to make every single aspect it's uh, time consuming all right now the other thing I wanted to do was experiment with layering uh, f f something finer over the top so that's what I'm going to experiment here with so I'm going to use these trees but use them as a foliage which for those of you who've been watching me a while know that I like doing so we've got mint macaron here so just gonna, oops don't need to drop that So 
So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about these sort of central portions. It might be that they'll make good areas to put a sentiment. I forgot, I, should, I don't really want to be inking up the, the ground bits. I just want the trees really. So just be careful when you're inking up a stump like this if you don't want the ground lines, just be careful. Oh dear, sorry to hear that Caroline. That's not nice. Okay, so you may not see that much of a difference between the mint macaron and the purpose, uh, sorry, pool party here, but I think as it dries you may, you may see the difference start to appear a bit more. Hi Gina. Hi Janice. Okay. So I'm really going with the flow here. I'm just enjoying the lines and the textures and any block. Seeing where it will lead. Okay, so this little leaf stamp is so delicate and pretty. <laughs> Janine, if you just put your foot in it. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I know what you mean about the zoom. Yeah, if, if you're not... If it's the first time you've met somebody, sometimes it takes two or three meetings of people, just like it is in real life, actually, for people to, you know, remain in your memory. I was, Gina. Yeah, I was. I've been watching more tutorials today. Thinking of ways I can achieve different things. So I'd like to try and achieve something similar to what I do with my One Sheet Wonders. Not obviously such a large canvas, but um, I'd, I'd like all the textures and, and things that I get with the One Sheet Wonders. I'm trying to think, how can I sort of re repre replicate? Not obviously exactly, because clay is a very different medium, but... Hi Martina. Okay, so I've got some of these lovely leaves dotted all over the place. Just do a couple more right up here. There we go. Hi Christine as well. Don't see you coming. Okay, just notice there's that lovely dotty stamp we've got here, so I might use that one. I've got the grey. So this is grey granite, which is a lovely kind of um, in-between grey and brown, pale brown colour. It sort of sits very nicely between smoky slate and crumb cake. Or even Sahara sand, actually. It's like an in-between colour. Not quite grey, not quite brown. But a very nice helpful neutral to have. <laughs> Looks like lovely wallpaper. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, I'm still thinking about what I want as my kind of focal point. I might have some flowers. Um, I was thinking about these little flowers here. So I have got Highland Heather out, but I'm not sure. And I do have some of this. This these flowers 
Okay, a couple of these out. Of course, Deborah, here we go. I'm going to go with a fresh freezer, I think. So, I've got these points of, in the design where things seem to radiate from. So, I've got this section here, 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 here. So, I want to now start creating the sort of the focal points in those areas. Although, I'm really not quite sure what I'm doing. I'm just making it up, really, as I go along. You know me. Hello, Nessa. Oh, for anybody who's my customer and you haven't had an email from me or you've not told me what stamp sets you're interested in that are retiring, can you let me know? Um, I have been slowly sorting out and going through. I've got little paper packages, not quite tied up with string yet, but of different ones that people have requested. Nessa, I'll sorting yours out today. Um, but I haven't. I know I haven't got round to emailing everybody. So. So those are got quite a bit of a blank space here, but that's okay. Sometimes it is nice to have a bit of white space. Oh yes, that's true, Deborah. <laughs> yeah, toile. The lovely toile. We also want some of these lovely flowers in here. So because this is a darker colour and also I'm using the red rubber, we can get quite a few impressions from one inking here. Yes, I've I've managed to put aside a stamp set, a punch, and maybe an embossing folder actually. Yep. Hi Wendy. Are you enjoying your rainy Saturday? Yes. Yes, if you kept this monochromatic, then yeah, definitely it would look very much like toile. But now I've started adding colour, it's not so, not so toile-like. See, I can see, you see, this is the first inking. This is the one that I inked just a couple of minutes ago and you can tell it's already lightened up. So when you first stamp, don't get have a shock with the colour. Just give the colour time to soak into the paper, especially if it's the white paper that you're using. So. has enabled you with the newest embossing folders. Oh, which one did she enable you with, Deborah? Oh yes, Wendy's got her live later today. 
don't subscribe to Wendy on Facebook, please do. She has a happy live that goes that she does on Facebook on her business page. Right, so something I wanted to have a little go at was creating the idea of almost like little strings of pearls, okay? So I will show you one of the pieces that I did yesterday. These are made, I managed to get four, did I get four circles? Here we go. So I created this big sheet of poly polymer clay and then I cut it into these circles and um, this effect here I achieved by just putting a thin string of clay and then I just poked into it with my like, little pokey tool thing here but it created this lovely impression of like beads almost and I quite like the idea of having strings of beads and also I've been watching Bridgerton and they wear loads of beads in Bridgerton so um, I want to try and create that effect so there is this tiny little almost pearly like thing here now I have got pale papaya out but I'm not sure if I want to add that now I might just want to stick with the colours I already have. Oh, thank you, Martina, for the translation. So it may mean I just need to keep keep inking. Right, let's go from there to there. But it's I want to almost create the effect of Little, little beads. So this is going to take a bit of time, <laughs> but I think the effect is so pretty. There we go, what do you think to that? Oh, these are meant to be closer together. And also trying to remember to curve them around a little bit as well. Because they look a bit odd if they're just straight. Oh, I've got to keep the ink pad close to me because it makes it a bit easier to do this technique. Hi Susan, hi April. that rain hmm it's okay but it is quite <laughs> labor intensive Would I recommend Bridgerton? Um, mm, it depends what you like. It's 
So if you if you like Jane Austen, then you may enjoy it. Just be aware that um, it has uh, quite some quite um, intimate scenes without being too explicit. Um, so if you find uh, the modern way of filming love scenes a bit heavy, then just I'd forward those sections. I, I found them a little bit too much personally, to be honest. I, I and I didn't feel it enhanced the storyline. Um, so it, it yeah, it, it depends how. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think you get what I mean. <laughs> it's more than just a... It's it's sort of a period drama. It is a fantasy period drama. It is not based... Uh, it's, it's based in a time, you know, in an era around uh, when King George III was alive. And so it it supposes what would have happened... And it's not, so when I say this, it's not a massive part of the plot, but it, it does, it's a very interesting uh, proposition. What would have happened if King George III had married a black woman? So because of that, the, the representation of uh, black people within the storyline is much greater than, histo than, you know, historically accurate stories uh, so it's a very interesting proposition and I, I found that I found that bit very interesting from a historical point of view and also having watched um, we watched Hamilton recently and it was interesting to watch that as a uh, they did what's called colorblind casting for that um, so yeah Yes, Deborah. Yes, it it was a little. It is a little bit. Now I'm rewatching it. Would you believe I'm watching certain episodes for the third time because I found the costumes absolutely exquisite, and I'm watching it to get inspiration. So I'm far, I'm kind of like forwarding the those bits, and I and I actually quite like some of the story build up as well. I'm, I don't want to give spoilers away, but there's a, a growing sort of love interest which is very handled very sweetly. Um, but yeah, it, it, it it's it's produced by Shonda Rhimes. So for those of you who know what Shonda Rhimes produces, if you if you're accustomed to any of her other work, then you'll know that she's not afraid of uh, <laughs> adding those scenes. <laughs> yes, Bridgerton is on Netflix. Yeah, but yeah. If you love lavish costumes, then you will certainly enjoy it. Yeah, the clothes and the furniture and the even the the decor in the houses and even the way. That, so I'm I studied costume design at university. So for, to watch the way that they dress certain families in certain colors and you know, the way that they decorated the homes and oh, it's just, oh, it's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Hi, Tashana. <laughs> okay, I still want it to be a little bit more whimsical, this. I know I've already got a lot of whimsy in here, but I, st I want to add more. So, oh, still got, I haven't used this yet. Yeah, they do do a lot of research, but because it's a fantasy, historical, historical fantasy, it's not true to the completely true to the era. So, if you're a purist, you won't, <laughs> you'll, um, you'll be picking holes in it. I mean, the color, the colors are too vibrant, and you know, the the fabrics are wrong. <laughs> 
they are beautiful. Yeah, if I have mentioned this before, if you really love colour, um, Empress Empresses at the Palace is another one that was on Netflix. It's a Chinese language based drama, so it's all subtitled. But I enjoyed that very much for the costuming and the colours. Really beautiful. Oh, thank you, Martin. Yeah, I like this wavy line. I'm trying to see. If we... Oh, we have got this one. in the cool party oops you can be pedantic yeah so yeah it's best not to watch Bridgerton with in, with that in mind really just enjoy the lavishness of it I'll tell you what I did watch again recently but again if you're a bit sensitive to um those intimate scenes, just that, just you can forward, fast forward certain ones. Uh, it's Dangerous Liaisons, by um, the based on the French novel uh, La Liaison Dangereuse by uh, La La Clos La Clos. La, oh, I've forgotten his name. Anyway, it's the it's a film with Glenn Close and um oh, what's his name? Oh, the name's going to escape me. It's got a very young Keanu Reeves in it. And... Um, oh, my goodness, my brain. I'm sorry. I'm not quite thinking straight at the moment. But anyway, it's it's a incredible... Incredible performances, actually, from most of the actors. No, it's not Michael Douglas. Oh, I can see his face. Oh, I'm going to have to look it up. <sighs> anyway, it's if you're in the UK, it's on BBC at the moment. So you can watch it for free. Cast, here we go. Uh, so everyone's a little bit younger there. John Malkovich, incredible performance. Now, I would have loved to have seen this at the sta on stage because apparently when this was on stage, Alan Rickman played his character. Oh, I love Alan Rickman as well. But Michelle Pfeiffer, Uma Thurman, very young Uma Thurman, and uh, Keanu Reeves. Oh, Peter Capaldi. Oh my goodness, yes. I've just remembered Peter Capaldi, didn't it? Anyway, uh, it's amazingly written it, it's it's a very good adaptation of the, the the book the book is actually a series of letters between the different characters so Christopher Hampton does a fantastic job kind of creating the, the screenplay from it and uh, oh and incidentally Christopher Hampton wrote uh, is it the father that was that Anthony Hopkins just got the Oscar for But if you, if you ever want to watch a study into um, narcissism, <laughs> uh, yeah, Dangerous Liaisons is your film, really. I feel I feel like it should be a film that women watch to know how to look out for predatory men because he's he's so awful. You you kind of you fall in love with him, really. 
Valmon's character, but you also really hate him at the same time because <laughs> he's so awful. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh, it's free to watch. Wend. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, don't don't watch it with the kids around. It's not appropriate for children. Right. So I'm taking this little flower, and I'm thinking I want to add little flowers onto these leaves. I've not done this before. But isn't that adorable? Look, we can add little flowers onto. Her. And that's the great thing about stamps. You can mix and match your stamp sets. Did you choose the second set of leaves to bunce? Yes, I did. Yeah, I couldn't be bothered to do all this again. And I just wanted another sort of trail. Take care, Deborah. Lovely to see you. Well, it's a, yeah, it, it's an interesting study in how a narcissist, what happens when a narcissist falls in love. And then, yeah, I won't, I won't give away the, the plot, but yeah, you, you, there's a point where you do feel terribly sorry for him. And, and he, um, oh, what's the name of the actor? I've just forgotten already. Oh my word. Um, John Malkovich John Malkovich just oh, his face his facial expressions just seem to completely tell you exactly what is on his heart it's, it, he, he just does a masterful job actually who directed it let me just see who wrote, who directed it overview Oh, Stephen Frears. <gasps> oh, okay. I didn't realise he's quite well known. He's directed lots of good stuff, isn't he? Oh, he started. He directed Wilhelmina. Uh, oh, and Flo Florence Foster Jenkins. Who's seen that? That's good fun. That's got some good costumes in it with um, uh, what's her name? Um, 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 uh, Meryl Streep. That's a lovely film. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> right, I think I'm sort of done. I wanted this to be just sort of pretty and whimsical, really. I don't want to add too much else to this. Apart from there's those really adorable little dotty things, these. I might just add a few of those and then that'll be it, really. Indeed, yeah, there was su su such restrictive clothing. Oh, I don't. I had to look that up, Martina. Yeah, I'm not having a good day for my memory today. Hi, Luke. 
Louis de Rue. <laughs> I've been looking inside like some. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for saying hi. Right, now I do feel like I need a bit more purple now I've said. Oh, I've finished. I'm not really finished. I say that. Now I want to add some. Maybe just add it to the eucalyptus bits. <laughs> well, wow, Martina, you are old enough to be my mother. any more done she says Johnny says done thank you Johnny <laughs> right so the stamp sets we use are in bloom especially these smaller ones don't really use the big ones lovely you this one and this one so glad this is carried over great little set. Forever Fern, that one and that one and that one. Again, really pleased this carried over. And then Nature's Beauty. Again, this carried over, didn't it? That was a bit of a surprise, but really pleased about that. So I use that mainly that tree, then that leaf and the, the dots as well. The dots are very cute. Very, very cute. Very whimsical. So... There we go. Yeah, it's very sweet. Okay, so shall I show you a few more things that I created yesterday? Uh, let's come in a bit closer. Um, so I showed you these ones earlier. So this was towards the end of the evening. So my first kind of play, I created what's called a cane. Off the floor because I was drawing them on a towel on the floor. So I made a cane with mixing, oh, I think it was black and oranges and things, and then I kind of over mixed it a little bit. So anyway, I cut the cane so that I got that that sort of piece from it. And then I experimented with cutting the cane and putting it onto a flat piece of polymer clay and then running it through my pasta machine. So where the, the cane started out this sort of size, but then I ended up kind of stretching it out, re-stretching it out so that you could see the, or you can see all the different shadings because I did, I did what's called a Skinner blend. So I blended the colour from orange to black and then I rolled it up and then created this these petals with them. So that was my first play. Now these are going to make very large earrings. The, these are going to be massive earrings. And then I cut four of these and I shaped these with my tools. And I thought these could actually just be placed here might just do that and I'll put a bead there and then that will be the earring finished maybe using some sort of bronze type findings I think maybe we'll keep it all very 
sort of like autumnal and stuff. Uh, could be bookmarks. Um, they could only they're not super flat, Gina. Yeah, I've not I've not been very disciplined to make sure that they've they're flat. They're and they're probably a little, little bit too thick, but they're just going to make massive earrings. Okay, and then I experimented with again a did a Skinner blend and then made a cane so that went from can you see it's going from light to dark. So I've made myself these little wee beads that um, I'm not quite sure what I was, I'm going to do. I might just do a, I could do some earrings where these all go on to head pins and then sort of dangle down. Oh, I've got that one as well, dangle down. Or I then created a cane that created that petal there. So I'm wondering whether to do that at the bottom and then have these, or we could have, oh, I don't know. Anyway, could have a bunch there. It's quite bright though, it's probably a bit bright. So then I made the, the picture that I shared with you guys last night was I made that cane and then I cut slices of it and then decorated a slab. So I did this sort of size slab and then laid those on and then just put little rolled up pieces and then I just I really had great fun with my tools just pushing and creating little I don't know what you call them really weird little flowers yes they do look like ginkgo leaves that one and then oh I, I bought an extruder as well so an extruder makes these tiny thin cane things so I made these twirly whirlies yeah um so that was that, and these are massive. So either these could make a very large earrings or they're gonna be pendants, something. Then I had, I managed to cut a oh, hold on. Oh, right, then I had, oops. Then I had a piece of black, I did a black layer and then I put the green canes. I just laid them across and did a bit of a trellis effect. And then I put that through the pasta machine to roll it. So this is actually flat. It's embedded inside. And then I cut my little flowers. And I decorated that piece with the flowers. And then I, once I laid my flower kind of petals down, I, I then pushed into it to create more texture there. And then, oh, this was another cane that I made. I'm I'm learning. I've got to not over mix. I'm I'm kind of over mixing in my exuberance. So anyway, so th those will just make earrings. Those those can just be a pair of earrings. And those these were two scrappy bits. I thought I could make earrings from that. And then this was like the final thing of the evening. Oh no, it wasn't. Ah, I forgot about these two. So these were just like green bits and then I was just experimenting with the with those oh yeah I'm just getting back into jewelry making take care Tashana yeah so this is very much a study in green this one <laughs> if you don't like green look away now um, yeah canes are tricky but I've I've realised that if you want to be able to decorate a piece quickly, canes are the way forward, really. Uh, so then I created this mottled piece. So this has got pearlescent. So when I ordered the clay, they were out of white, but I ordered a pearlescent white. So I created this background marble piece with the pearlescent white and black and pink. And then put those on and then again added some little extruded coil bits so those will make a pair of earrings as well then this was my final piece pieces that I played with and then that's just a piece that was left over I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that although I did quite like the idea of mixing oh no these ones maybe doing that with it or something because I've got three of those I could cluster those at the oh just drop one Cluster those at the top, maybe. 
because they're all the same sort of shade. I can only afford one craft. I've been searching for small yellow and silver earrings. Oh yeah, make them yourself. Yeah. Well, this is I. This was my birthday money I spent on this because I've been I've been stalking various people on Etsy who I love their work and thinking, oh, I can try and replicate what I do with stamps with polymer clay, but realise that you know I needed to invest in a few colours and you know that kind of thing. So. I waited to my birthday to have some spending money to to do that and had a good time playing with these. So yeah, I'm gonna keep playing and seeing what what else I can come up with. Yeah, that would be a nice pendant that one. I think that. That one there like that. I think that one will do just as it is. Too funky earring. There we go. Right, lovely to see everybody. Thank you for indulging me while I showed you these. And I'll see you guys again next week. Uh, uh, what's Martina said? Which ones did you like, Martina? You could use the bigger pink floor as a pendant. Oh yes, and then match. Yeah, have that one as a pendant. I oh, should think is I don't tend to wear necklaces. But like of this sort of I don't know. Yeah. I suppose I could make a really funky necklace. Oh yeah, those could be the earrings. I suppose if it had like thick beads it would balance it out wouldn't it you'd really have to make something quite spectacular but yes oh hair clips yes that's the other thing I've seen people do they they yeah put this onto a hair clip yeah that oh that makes so much sense yes a hair clip would be nice wouldn't it yeah but that yeah those those are from the same piece that one right yes other people do <laughs> yes quite right caroline other people will wear it i know it may not be me but um yeah i think i'm definitely going to make a pair of earrings for myself so these i i'd wear these and i think i'd probably wear these ones too so those will be for me and then i'll see what happens to the rest of them all right lots of love everyone have a great weekend Thank you for giving me a thumbs up if you have done already and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.